Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about the conic sections. This is uh, beginnings of the study of analytical geometry. And um, we're going to start with the easiest of all the conic sections, and that is the circle. So if we look at our notes, 8.1 number 1, the first equation is this. And our job is to find the center and the radius. So the center of this circle is 1, negative 2. That's a plus sign right there. 1, negative 2. So the opposite of this and the opposite of this. And the radius is 4, the square root of 16. So this is an x squared. This is a y squared. That is r squared. That number is r squared. So the radius is 4. B is exactly the same thing. So our center for B will be at negative 3, 2. And our radius will be the square root of 18 which we will write as 3 root 2 because we always break down our radicals whenever possible. Now, you'll notice that the next problem looks a little different. If the equations are not in standard form, which is the way A and B were, A and B were in standard form, if they're not in standard form, then in order to find the center and the radius, you're going to have to put them in standard form. So you know how to do this. You know what you need to do. You need to complete the square. So we're going to complete the square twice. We're going to do it on x and we're going to do it on y so that we get those two squared parentheses like we had in equations a and b. So here's how this works. Put your two x's together. So this term and this term. Put those together. And leave a blank, because you're going to put a number in that blank. And then do the same thing with your y's. So we have y squared plus 8y, our two y terms, plus blank. And that equals the 6 plus the two blanks. So in other words, we're going to add something here and here on the left side of the equation which means we also have to add them on the right side of the equation because that's how it works. Now, to find out what we're going to add, we're going to complete the square. And you recall that means we're going to take half of 4 and square it. So half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So we're going to put a 4 in the first blank. One more time. Half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. This is the completing the square process that you've done over and over again when you solved quadratics. Now, half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. So that's what we're going to add to both sides. Half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Now, the reason that you did this is because this right here is a perfect square. This is x minus 2 squared. If you factor this thing I have circled, it factors into x minus 2, x minus 2. So this can be written as x minus 2 squared. The same thing for this, only that can be written as y plus 4 squared. 
Now, if you have any questions about that, um, just think about factoring this. This would factor as y plus 4, y plus 4. And that's how you would get that perfect square. These will always be perfect squares. When you complete the square, these will always be perfect squares. And that equals 26. 6 and 4 and 16. The original 6 and then the 4 and the 16 that you added. So now you can tell that the center of the circle is at 2, negative 4. And the radius of the circle is the square root of 26. Now, that's a lot of steps, but that's what you have to do to get your equation into standard form. All right, so let's try another one. Now we have problem D. Problem D says we have x squared plus y squared uh, plus 8x minus 6. Now, this is just like the one we just finished. We're going to have to start by grouping our x's together. So x squared plus 8x plus blank. Always put that blank in there because you are trying to make it so that you can get a perfect square, get it to factor into a perfect square. Now, notice that there, oops, that one's no good. Notice that there's no y squared. I mean, there, there's no, no other y term. There is a y squared, I'm sorry, but there's no y term that goes with it. So we're just gonna write y squared. And we're going to move that 6 to the other side. So the two x's get grouped together, and we're going to complete the square. There's nothing to put with the y squared, so he just stays put by himself. The 6 gets added to the other side, and of course, if we add this blank here, we got to add one over there. So here we go. Half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. And we don't have to do it with the y's because there's no quantity there. So we have x plus 4 squared plus our y squared equals 22. Now that may look a little different, but actually it's easier. Where's our center? Our center will be at negative 4, comma, 0, and the radius is root 22. Now why is it 0? Well, if you think about it, y squared is the same as y minus 0 squared, right? So if you want to write it that way, you can. The idea is there was nothing to add here. So it's just a 0. Your center is at negative 4, comma, 0. All right, there's one more of those. They're, they're pretty easy, not too bad. x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 4y equals 10. All right, so here we go. Remember, if you're going to put this in standard form, which is what you need to do in order to find your center and your radius, you're going to group your x's together and leave a blank. We always leave that blank if we have a plain x or a y. In the last problem we just did, we did not have a plain y. We had a y squared, but no y. So we didn't have to worry about it. But if we have a plain x, we have to leave a blank. And notice that we also have a plain y. So we'll have a blank there. And then we have our 10 and our two blanks. So here we go. Half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Now, this right here is going to be x plus 2 squared. This will factor into x plus 2, x plus 2. This 
is going to factor into y minus 2. Notice it's a minus. And that equals 18. So our center is at negative 2, 2. And our radius is the square root of 18, which is 3 root 2. And that is about it for circles. Now, part two deals with parabolas. Now, you might be thinking, Mrs. Ford, how do you know this is a parabola? Well, you know this already because way back in the beginning of the year, we talked about our BFFs. And one of our BFFs was the squaring function. So when we have an equation with one squared in it, notice that looks different than the circle equations. The circle equations had two squares in them. This has one squared in it. This is a parabola. Now, for the parabola, there are four pieces of information that you're asked to find. You're asked to find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and the fo what's called the focal width. Now I'm going to kind of explain this um, terminology and, and what all these things mean um, as we go through the problem, but I think that's the easiest thing to do. So there are some things you need to know to get started. I always think it's a good idea to sketch your parabola. The vertex of this particular parabola is at the origin. The reason I know it's at the origin is because there is nothing added or subtracted. I want you to think about this for a second. The problem that we just did with the circles. Remember the one that had just a plain y squared. There was nothing added or subtracted to the y. It was just a plain y squared. So that coordinate of the center was at zero. This is the same concept. If you look down uh, on your paper, if you're looking at the, the note sheet, problem C has stuff added and subtracted to the X and the Y. That's going to move your vertex. But with nothing added or subtracted, our vertex is right here at the origin. Now, here is something I need you to write down on your paper. These are some important rules, and I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to have to erase them, but I want you to get them written down on your paper. There are two kinds of parabolas. There are x squareds and there are y squareds. This coefficient right here, that is the coefficient that's on the unsquared term, the coefficient on the unsquared term. That thing can be positive or negative. If you have an x squared parabola, and that coefficient is positive, you open up. So an x squared positive is up. If this had been a negative 8, which, is, which it isn't, but if it had been a negative 8, it would open down. So you need to keep all this straight. If it's a y squared, if this had been a y squared equals 8x, for example, and a positive number, it opens to the right. And if it's a y squared with a negative coefficient, it opens to the left. Now we're going to get one of each of these through our notes. We're going to have plenty of practice. But for now, I need you to write that down because I'm going to be erasing it. And that you need to be able to refer to until you get it memorized. x squareds are functions. They're up and down. They open up and down y squareds are not functions, they open sideways. Okay, so with that, I can now look at my parabola and say, okay, my vertex is at the origin, and I know it's an x squared positive, so I know it opens up. So I'm just going to freehand sketch it in. Now, inside the parabola, is a very, very important point. 
it actually is one of the things that defines the parabola, but it's called the focus. And the focus is inside the parabola. This is the focus. It's inside the parabola. The parabola opens around it. And in this case, it is straight up from the vertex. Obviously, if the parabola opened differently, it might be straight down from the vertex or straight right from the vertex. Excuse me. But in this case, it's right above it. Your job is to find the coordinates of that focus. Now, one of the coordinates is easy. Since this is the point 0, 0, and you're going straight up, your x-coordinate is still 0. That's just logical. If you do this on graph paper, sometimes that helps. But that's just logical. It opens straight up. Moves straight up. Now, the distance from the center, it's not the center, from the vertex to the focus, that distance we call P. There's, there's probably a reason for that, not sure what it is, but we're going to call that P. In every one of these equations that you have in standard form, this number right here, this coefficient that we talked about before, is always 4P. Not sometimes, not only in special cases, but always. That coefficient is always 4P. So in our problem, 4P is 8, which means P is 2. Now remember, the distance from the vertex to the focus is P. So this distance right here is 2. So if you start at 0, 0 and go up 2, you are at the point 0, 2. That is your focus. Your directrix is a line, and it is exactly the opposite direction as the focus is. So what I mean is, I'm not saying that very well, if you went up to to plot your focus, you're going to go down to to plot your directrix. Your directrix is a line, your directrix is a line, and it, it, you go the same distance as you went to the focus, but you go in the opposite direction. So if I go up to for my focus, I'm going to come down to, and my directrix is the line y equals negative 2. Now, for some reason, sometimes kids get their letters mixed up, and they'll say x equals negative 2. Well, you can have a directrix of x equals negative 2, but not this one. Because this one is coming, um, this one's horizontal. Horizontal lines cross the y-axis, so they are y equals negative 2. This one is y equals negative 2. Now, your focal width, which is also sometimes called the length of the lattice rectum. So sometimes the focal width is also referred to as the lattice rectum. That's why on the notes I have a little LR there, um, focal width, sometimes called lattice rectum. And what that is, is simply the width of the segment that goes right through the focus. So it's the width of the parabola through the focus. And if you knew how wide that was or how long that segment was, you would know whether you had a fat parabola or a skinny parabola. Well, actually, you do know how long it is because the focal width is always this number. This number is the focal width. So for this problem, the focal width is 8. Now that is a lot of information, <coughs> um, so we're going to do a, a, some more examples because I think it will start making more sense to you um, when we do some more. But 
I do want to say one thing before I erase all this. That number right there is pretty darn important because that number right there gives me all kinds of information about my parabola. It helps me determine which way it opens, depending on if it's positive or negative. It helps me determine where my focus and my directrix are, and it gives me the width of the parabola through the focus. So that is a really, really important number. All right, let's try another one. Let's try B, which is y squared equals 12x. Now again, I don't have any, add in or any adds or subtracts in here, no additions or subtractions. So guess what? My vertex is at the origin. If there's nothing added or subtracted to the x's and the y's, then you are at zero, zero. We'll get the next one. We're, we're, we won't be zero, zero again, but we are here. Now it's a y squared and it's a positive number. So look at your chart. If it's a y squared and a positive number, then this parabola is going to open to the right. It's a little freehand sketch of a parabola opening to the right. Now, that tells me that my vertex, well, excuse me, my focus is in here somewhere. Remember that the parabola always opens around its focus. The focus will never be out here or down here. It's inside the parabola. The parabola opens around it. Now, because the parabola, or excuse me, the, the focus is straight right, I don't know what the x-coordinate is, but I do know the y-coordinate of that point is zero. That point right there has a y-coordinate of zero. And again, if it helps you to use graph paper, certainly you can use graph paper. So my focus is something comma zero. Now, remember that the distance from the vertex to the focus is P. And in every equation of every parabola in this form, 4P is that number. So in this problem, 4P is 12, which means P is 3. So we're going to start at the vertex and go to the focus, and we're going to take three steps to get there. So if that's the origin, this is the point 3 comma 0. And if we went 3 to the right for our focus, we're going to come 3 to the left for our directrix. This line crosses the x-axis at negative 3. So our directrix is x equals negative 3. And your focal width, that's a no-brainer. It's always that number. So the focal width is 12. So if you were actually graphing this parabola, it would be a little fatter than I'd drawn it because this segment right here would be 12 units long. So you'd have to count up 6 and down 6. So that would make that parabola a little bit fatter. I'm not grading your sketches. Don't worry about it. We're just trying to figure out Vertex focus, directrix, and focal width. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next one, which looks a little harder, but it really isn't. All right, so here we are. We need all the same information, so we're going to find vertex, focus, directrix, and focal width. I'm going to draw a little picture of it to kind of help me get myself oriented. Pictures aren't necessary, but they help me, so I'm drawing them. Hopefully they help you too, don't confuse you. Um, where's my vertex? Well, this one is not at the origin, because see all that adding and subtracting going on? So remember how when you had a circle 
you took the opposite. So when you saw x minus 2, you said 2. And when you saw y plus 1, you said negative 1. It works the same way. So your vertex is at the point 2, negative 1. Now some of you might be thinking, why is it 2, negative 1 and not negative 1, 2? Because when you write an ordered pair, it's always x comma y. No matter what the order of the equation is, it's always x comma y. So, 2, negative 1. There's my vertex. 2, negative 1. Now notice it's a y squared and it's a positive coefficient. So this guy opens to the right. And I don't know where my focus is, but I, I know it's in, it just be a straight line. I know it's in here somewhere. I'm going to go straight to the right. Now, if you're doing this on graph paper, you can see that while you don't know exactly how far over you went, you clearly know that the y is going to be negative 1. And again, I put some graph paper in Schoology. It's probably a good idea to use it if you have a hard time visualizing this. Now, in order to figure out what the x-coordinate is, I know my vertex is at 2, but I have to count over some. Well, how much do I have to count over? I have to count over p. That distance right there is p. Well, in this equation, 4p is 4. So p is 1. So I'm going to start at 2 and count over 1. So my focus is at 3, negative 1. Remember, 4p is this number. So in this case, 4p is 4, so p is 1. That is, from the vertex to the focus is one unit. Now, if you went forward one unit to get your focus, then you're going to come backwards one unit to get your directrix. So if you back up, you're at 1, 2, back up, 2 minus 1, we're at 1, crossing the x-axis, so it's x equals 1. Your directrix is x equals 1. And your focal width is 4. There's no, you, you can't miss that problem. You can't miss that question. That number right there is the focal width every single time. All right, now we got another one. The more of these we do, the, the easier it's going to be for you. They're, they're, they become kind of second nature. They're all done exactly the same way. There's just those rules you have to remember. So here we go. Vertex, focus, directrix, focal width. Where's my vertex? Well, this one's full of pluses and minuses, or actually minuses. So my vertex, always x comma y, so it's going to be 3 comma 1. So 3 comma 1 is my vertex. one. Notice it's x squared and a negative. x squared and a negative, look at your chart, means it opens down, which means that my focus is going to be straight down from my vertex. So think about that point right there. We know that the x has to be 3, but we don't know what the y is. My focus is going to be 3 comma something. Because I have to figure out how far down I have to go from my y coordinate. Well, remember, in every parabola of the, in this form, 4p is that number. Don't worry about the negative. All the negative does is tell you you're going down. So 4p is 8, which means p is 2. 
that means that you're going to come down two to get to this point. So if you have graph paper, you can just count the blocks. Just start at three comma one and count down two. We count down two, we're at three negative one. That's my, or my focus. That's my focus. Now, if I counted down two to get my focus, I'm going to count up two to get my directrix. And if I count up two, I will be at y equals three. Y equals, because I'm going up and down, I mean, I'm counting up, so I'm y, crossing the y-axis, it's a horizontal line, y equals three is my directrix. And my focal width is eight. I know that number is a negative. Please don't put a negative here. This is a width. So that's going to be eight, just positive eight. The negative is a directional thing, not a width thing. Great. I think there's one more of these, and then we're going to go backwards. So let's do this one now, one more. We have y minus 1 squared equals 16x plus 1. Okay. There's my vertex. Watch it. This is another one uh, where things are kind of backwards and you might be kind of tempted to um, do it in the wrong order. x comma y. So my vertex is at negative one, positive one. Negative one, positive one. That's my vertex. Negative one, positive one. Now, in this problem, okay, wait, first of all, it's a y squared positive. Y squared positive, look at your chart. That means right. So my focus is in here somewhere. It is inside the parabola. Always the focus is inside the parabola. So we're moving to the right. Now, in this problem, 4P is 16. So P is 4. 4P is always that number. So I'm going to start here. If I'm on graph paper, I'm just going to count over four blocks. If I start at negative one and go four, this is going to be the point three comma one. So my focus is three comma one. Count over one, two, three, four. And if you went four to the right to get your focus, you're going to go four to the left to get your directrix, which will be the line x equals negative 5. We started at negative 1 and counted over 4. x equals, we crossed the x-axis. And the focal width is 16. Now hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, because what we're going to do now is exactly the same thing but backwards. So here's what I mean. Remember, this is what the equation of a parabola looks like. So my goal in this next problem is going to be to come up with an equation that looks like that. It's got a squared quantity equal to some number and an unsquared quantity. That's what my equation of my parabola is going to look like. So what am I told? I'm told that the vertex, this is problem 3a, I'm told that the vertex is 3, negative 2. I'm going to graph this. This is my vertex. I'm told it opens to the right. This is information that's just given to me in the problem. So my vertex is 3, negative 2, and it opens to the right, and it contains the point 5, 1. 
So out here someplace is the point five comma one. So that is what I know about my parabola. Now from that, I'm supposed to be able to build this equation. Well, remember that the numbers inside the parentheses that we add and subtract, those give us the vertex. Also, the fact that we're opening to the right tells me that it is the y that is squared. Look at your chart. If things open right and left, it's y that's being squared. So I know the y is in the squared parentheses and the x is in the unsquared parentheses because it's opening, excuse me, to the right. Since my vertex is 3, negative 2, I'm going to go ahead and put x minus 3 and y plus 2. Now, the only thing I don't know is what this number is right here. So just for fun, I'm going to call that number N. You can call it A, call it whatever you want. I don't, I don't care. Call it something. I don't know what that number is. I can't really find it because I don't know where my focus is. I know that number has to do with focal width, but I don't know that information. But I do know that whatever this equation is, the point 5 comma 1 works in it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a 5 in, this is your x and your y, so I'm going to put a 5 in for my x, and I'm going to put a 1 in for my y, and now I have this equation. I put a 1 in for my y and a 5 in for my x. So 9, 1 plus 2 is 3, squared is 9, equals... 2n, so n equals 9 halves. So I take that extra point that they gave me, and we actually did this earlier in the school year, that extra point that they gave me, and I just plug it in. And when I plug it in, it tells me that my n has to be 9 halves. And that is the answer to the problem. Let's try number two, or B, B, I'm sorry, B. All right, so again, our goal is to write the equation of a parabola that has one parenthesis squared, one parenthesis not squared, and then this coefficient. Now, they didn't give me much information this time. They said the vertex is 2, negative 3, so 2, negative 3. And the focus is 0, negative 3. I'm going to redraw this up a little higher. So 2, negative 3. That's my vertex. And my focus is 0, negative 3. All right, so this is the vertex and this is the focus. That's all they give you, and you're supposed to come up with the equation. Well, pay close attention to the way those two points are um, related to each other. Remember that the parabola always wraps around its focus. So the information that they gave you actually tells you that you're opening to the left. Can you see that? If that's the focus, it's got to open this way. And opening to the left means y is squared, x is not, and my vertex is 2, negative 3. So again, the configuration, the picture, has given me information about which way it opens, then I can fill in which parentheses gets x and which gets y. Because remember, if you're opening left and right, y is squared. And then you can plug into the parentheses your vertex. So that gives me 2, negative 3. Now last time, remember, I had a random point. This is not a random point on the curve. That's not on the curve. 
you can't be plugging that in. You can only plug in points that are on the curve. This time I don't have that. But I do know that this distance right here is P. And that distance from 0 to 2 means P is 2. Now remember, this number, whatever it is, it's always 4P. So if P is 2, then that number must be 8. But hang on. There's one more thing to worry about. Remember this thing opens to the left? Look at your chart. What does that mean? That means that 8 has to be negative. Because parabolas that open to the left or down have a negative coefficient. This distance from 0 to 2 was 2, 2 units. That's P is 2. The equation number is always 4P. So if P is 2, 4P has to be 8. Isn't this fun? It's like a puzzle. All right, so now we've got another one. We're writing the equation of a parabola. So our format is we have a squared parentheses and a non-squared parentheses. This coefficient we're always putting with the non-squared. What do we know this time? This time, we know that our vertex is at 1, 2. So that's my vertex. And I know that my directrix is y equals 1. Now that is your directrix. Now I know we haven't done a ton of these. But remember, when your parabola, so let's say your parabola opens this way, the directrix is outside, the focus is inside. They're in opposite directions. So if the focus is to the right of the vertex, the directrix is to the left of the vertex. So which way does that guy have to open, given that scenario? Which way does it have to open? Well, do you see how the um, um, directrix is below the vertex. That means the focus has to be above the directrix, or above the um, vertex. If the directrix is below, then the focus is opposite, so it's above. And if that's the focus, then your parabola has to open like this. It opens around its focus and away from its directrix. Now, you could figure out where the focus is, but you don't need to do that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start writing my equation now. That's my job, to fill in this equation. It opens up. If it opens up, it's x that's squared. Look at your chart. Up means x is squared. The vertex is 1, 2, so I can go ahead and fill those numbers into the appropriate spots. And now the only thing left is this number right here, which I know is 4P. But I can tell from my equation, or from my picture I mean, if this is the vertex, I had to come down one unit. I went from 2 down to 1 down one unit, and then up one unit, obviously, to get my focus. Well, if I went up and down one unit, then P is 1. That distance is 1. If P is 1, then 4P is 4. Now, last time, I made that number negative. Am I going to make it negative this time? No, I am not because this parabola is opening up. And opening up means that it's a positive.
Okay. That's it for today. I think that's enough for one day. So we'll stop there. And um, that's it. Have a great day.